there, Denison Class of 2020. This is Joyce from the President's Office joining with my colleagues of the faculty and staff to wish you an amazing and awesome graduation. Congratulations, Class of 2020. You are resilient. You can continue to function in the face of adversity, and we are very proud of you. Congratulations on your graduation today, and my best wishes for all your tomorrow. Fannie Lou Hamer said, nobody's free until everybody's free. And Angela Davis teaches us that freedom is a constant struggle. So keep struggling until everybody is free. In the words of uh, Lou Reed, um, between thought and expression, there lies a lifetime. So remember that. You've got a lot of time to do great things. You really have risen to the occasion and we see you and we recognize that. It's been a genuine pleasure to work with so many of you in the classroom and in the laboratory. I want you all to remember a famous quote by Dr. Seuss. You have to be odd to be number one. Go and show them what you're made of. I just wanted to wish the class of 2020 congratulations. I wish every one of you the best of luck. I also wanted to give a special shout out to Jordan Beck. You were an intern extraordinaire and I will miss you dearly. You have made us all so very proud. Continue to creatively adapt, demonstrate resilience, and move forward with a magical future ahead. Hi, Dennis and Class of 2020. We are lucky to have had you. Thank you. Félicitations, chère Denis Sonia, francophone et francophile. In 10 or 20 years, you're going to have a very unique story to tell your future friends and loved ones as you recount the good old college days. In considering the vastness of the universe, Carl Sagan referred to astronomy as a humbling and character-building experience. I hope you've experienced a sense of intrigue and wonder in all kinds of disciplines of study during your time at Denison. Thank you so much for all that you have given to our community. Congratulations on this terrific achievement and adelante! You are not your worst moment nor your finest hour, not your most maddening habit, nor your mother's favorite childhood anecdote. You've got the pen. It's your story. You guys are an amazing class, and I'm sure that even though it's been a disruptive semester, the skills and the ways you've had to adapt will bring you far in life. You guys have accomplished great things and we look forward to seeing what you will do in the future. Greetings from Educational Technology Services. Congrats on completing your degree and persevering through the most interesting semester we have ever experienced. You are the proud owner of a liberal arts degree and poised to adapt to whatever the world presents to you. Go out and announce to the world that you have arrived. And sell your tech skills. Contact us if you need any pointers. But the state is made up of many individuals, and as a feast to which all guests contribute is better than a banquet furnished by a single person, so a multitude is a better judge of many things than any one individual. Aristotle. I know you're going to be doing great things in the future. Congratulations. Here's some advice from W.E.B. Du Bois. Honest and earnest criticism is the soul of democracy and the safeguard of modern society. I hope you can continue your intellectual development you made in the last four years at Denison into your post-Denison life. Your time at Denison has prepared you to take on the world. Congratulations. Go Big Red and welcome to the Society of the Alumni. I encourage you to follow the four agreements. One, have impeccable speech. Two, don't make assumptions. Three, don't take anything personal. And four, always do your best. Much love.
I'm sorry we can't be there with you, but I'm so proud of you all and all you've accomplished. We're excited to welcome you into our community of alumni. In 2016, as Director of Admissions, I had the honor of leading your class into the opening convocation. I hope you've each had an amazing four years, and thank you for making us Denison proud. Face piles of trials with smiles. It riles them to believe you perceive the webs they weave. The Moody Blues. I want you each to know that you are a source of pride and joy, not only for your family members, but also for faculty like myself. Be well, be safe, be strong. Now go out there and make a difference. What you have done is extraordinary. Now go do the extraordinary. Congratulations, class of 2020. You will not soon be forgotten. Thanks for all your contributions to the Hill. Who you are and the values you have say more about you than whether you succeed or fail at any particular endeavor. I can't tell you how proud we are of your commencement. We miss you, we love you, and go Big Red. Thank you for making our campus more vibrant and more inclusive and for strengthening our community. We're so very proud of you as you graduate. Congratulations. Congratulations, class of 2020. It's been a great four years. You did it. We're really proud of you. I think especially of the seniors I've worked with this semester, you all have done incredible work and we are all so proud of you. Your contributions to campus were really meaningful. I will miss you and I hope you're back on campus soon so we can celebrate in person. Congratulations, Denison Class of 2020. Education majors, German majors, and international studies majors, and everybody else. We salute you, as do the cows. Roast. Even though we can't be there with you and all together to celebrate, know that we are celebrating with you in spirit. We hope you'll visit us soon and know you're off to do great things. Congratulations. Thank you for all the ways that you've motivated and inspired and taught me over the last four years. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three quarters percent guaranteed. Congratulations. Good luck, everybody. We will miss you. Go Big Red. Not only have you graduated, but you've done it under a set of extraordinary circumstances. So if you remember nothing else, you can do hard things. We're all really excited for you. Congratulations and good luck. Congratulations to all you 2020 student athlete graduates at Denison. We're super proud of you. One, have as much compassion as possible. Two, have as much integrity as possible. I've gotten to know many of you over the last four years, and I value and appreciate those relationships. But a big shout out to my 10 senior women's basketball players. Congratulations, and I'll miss you. Take your work seriously, but don't take yourself too seriously. Get out there, find the things that you love to do as much as Arthur here loves to chew on sticks. Good luck from the Knowlton Center. Yay! 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 The skills, values, and liberal arts mindset you've gained in your four years at Denison will be more important now than ever. Go forth and improve the world. You're extraordinary human beings, and I know you will do extraordinary things. Keep reading, keep learning, and congratulations. I want to wish 
the class of 2020 all the best and go make Denison proud. Uh, we're all totally counting on you to go out in the world and fix everything for us, so no pressure. I can't wait to see what you accomplish. I know it's going to be great. Remember the last lines of How to Be by Lisa Brown. Be brave, curious, patient, charming, creative, and friendly. Be yourself. I'm going to use the Douglas Adams quote to send you off here in 2020. I may not have ended up where I intended to go, but I think I've ended up where I needed to be. Go forth, be bold, be kind, be thoughtful, be gracious. You're ready for what comes next, so do your best. We're counting on you. To all you seniors, to all my seniors, thank you. Thank you for everything you gave us. Good luck. Enjoy this day and I will see you somewhere down the road. Así que mucho ánimo a todos y adelante. As Denison's queen of email, I'm officially retiring on June 2nd, so like you, I am also starting a new phase of my life but mine will be slower, calmer, and far less interesting than yours. I'm sure you will go out and change the world as many Denison graduates before you have done. Denison, you have learned how to navigate complexity and ambiguity, and whatever comes next, it cannot go as poorly as my first attempt at a haircut on myself. Stay positive, continue to pursue your passions, and challenge yourselves while continuing to serve the community and those you love. Congrats again, best of luck, go Big Red. I hope you'll take time every single day to stop and see the amazing and the very small things on the way to the very big amazing things that you're all going to accomplish. Congratulations class of 2020. Congratulations Denison class of 2020. Woo! Continue to embrace the joys, the sorrows, and the challenges that life offers so that you expand into being the person that you intend. Class of 2020, you've always held a special place in my heart, and you always will. To quote Fred Rogers, real strength has to do with helping others. Congratulations on a job well done. You had a really tough semester, but you did it. Congratulations, seniors. I'm sending my best wishes by channeling my inner spark. Live long and prosper. I was privileged to welcome you to the Denison family at your induction ceremony four years ago, and I'm thrilled to welcome you now to the Society of the Alumni. Congratulations, best wishes, and please come home often. It's been a great pleasure getting to know you, and uh, I just want to wish you all the best of uh, for, for, for wonderful lives.
Hello seniors, parents, family members, trustees, faculty, staff, and friends of the college. Welcome to the virtual conferring of degrees for the great Denison class of 2020. Now before I do anything else, I just want to remind the Denison class of 2020 that today we're going to confer upon you your college degree. And when the time is right, we're going to welcome you back to campus. About 100 year peers are working with us and we will do a graduation ceremony and senior week that you will look back in 50 years on with pride and joy. That's my promise to you. It's always my privilege to address graduating seniors as we confer their degrees and as they begin bold new chapters in their lives as Denison alum. This year, I find special value in upholding these important traditions and rites of passage. One of these rites of passage is always recognizing members of your class, of the graduating class, who have passed away during your four years on the Hill. Um, this year, I want to recognize and remember Sean Bonner, your classmate and your friend. Um, Sean, I want you to know that you are in our thoughts and prayers, and I know many of us carry your legacy with us as we move through our lives. As a former professor and sociologist, I never pass up an opportunity to share with students the wisdom of books that connect to real life. My talks this time of year often revolve around books that resonate with me and are providing me with insight and guidance. A few springs ago, I was talking about a book by the president of the Council on Foreign Relations, Richard Haas, called A World in Disarray. In the book, Haas writes that the world faces worrisome developments and trends that include increased rivalry among several of this era's major powers, the growing gap between global challenges and responses, the reality of and potential for conflicts in several regions, and political dysfunction and changes going on within many countries. Last year, I talked about a wonderful book, Practical Wisdom, by two Swarthmore professors Barry Schwartz and Kenneth Sharp, which poses a simple question. How do, are we to make things better? By better, they meant both for individuals and the world. How do we create a world where people have learned to make good decisions, which they define as decisions that enhance their lives and the lives of those around them? In many ways, Schwartz and Sharp fill in the how to Haas's what. For me, they outlined a kind of thinking that Haas calls for by describing characteristics of someone who has the capacity for practical wisdom. I'll summarize and simplify as follows. Somebody who wants to meet the needs of people they are serving, can improvise and balance conflicting aims, can read social context and manage ambiguity, has empathy, and knows how to make an emotion of ally of reason and has experience in the world. I've been thinking about both of these books as I've been reading a new one by Yuval Levin called A Time to Build. Levin talks openly about the need to rebuild institutions that can help people develop the skills, the values, the habits needed to move society forward. I found the book timely, as the COVID crisis is forcing all of us to step into new responsibilities. It's these kinds of moments when much is asked of us when extraordinary things can also occur. Levin starts from the premise that there's practical wisdom in both ends of the political spectrum, and by embracing the paradoxes and tensions, we can find new insights. His fundamental call is for institutions that can anchor a common life that serves all segments of society. Levin's focus is on the way institutions help us develop both the capacity and willingness to lead with a commitment to things larger than ourselves. Leadership less as performance and more as service to society. Levin writes that we're hungry for hope and renewal, and that we must all accept the responsibility that comes with the positions we hold, and we must ensure that the obligations and restraints actually protect and empower us. We need to inhabit these institutions, love them, and reform them to help make them more lovely to others as well. In a wonderful quote towards the end of the book, Levin writes, we don't have to figure out how everyone else might do this. We just have to do it ourselves, you and I. We can do it in small ways, in thinking about how to use our time and energy, how to pursue our goals, how to judge success and failure, how to identify ourselves when other people ask us who we are, how to measure our responsibilities. In essence, I think Levin is saying hope and renewal 
can be found in us and offered to others in the form of when and how we choose to lead. We all act as leaders and how we act and lead matters. The COVID crisis has forced me to peer deep inside myself to ask what kind of leadership I will lead to this great college that I love and what kinds of leadership I hope this college will help our graduates take out into the world. For me, I'm trying to lean into our values, to lead in ways that serves the needs of the Denison community, that gives people hope, and perhaps deepens their belief and commitment and connection to the college. I don't always get it right, and I can't always do everything that I want to do. But I can follow Levin's advice and act with purpose, intent, and clarity to use practical wisdoms to make the decisions that I believe are right and in service to the common aspirations we hold. For you, as our soon-to-be graduates, I hope you will use your liberal arts skills to lead with practical wisdom in ways that serve you well and that positively impacts the world around you. As you become alumni and meet other Denison alums, you will find that Denisonians often lead this way. Last week, I had a conversation with Denison alum Bruce Spies, a well-known and highly accomplished doctor and professor of medicine at the University of Florida, who at the start of the COVID crisis was working in a hospital that, like many, was facing shortages of N95 masks that are needed to protect the frontline healthcare workers. He literally woke up in the middle of the night with an idea for how to make masks from materials that were already readily available in hospitals. Bruce used practical wisdom to lean into and to lead on a pressing issue in ways that's protecting people who are trying to protect the rest of us. Denison and colleges like Denison tend to produce graduates who find themselves in leadership positions. Many of you will assume leadership roles in companies, organizations, and enterprises of all kinds. My liberal arts background instilled within me a way of thinking and being in the world that has served me well as a leader. You've been granted these same gifts, and I encourage you to apply them liberally as you step boldly into the future. Here's what I took away most from my liberal arts education. The first was to have strong views lightly held and to seek out views that are different from my own. The second was to focus on asking the right question. Answers tend to be more useful if you get the questions right. And the third was to be a relentless lifelong learner, always to find learning deeply and broadly. I believe that every graduating class leaves Denison prepared to make an impact on the world, to apply critical thinking and creative problem solving to complex issues and opportunities, to show tenacity and resilience in the face of adversary, to be flexible and adapt to changing tides, to see potential and find hope amidst uncertainty. I want to close my remarks by offering you a charge that I offer to each graduating class as we confer their Denison degree. First, take the education you've received here and live our mission. Be autonomous thinkers, discerning moral agents, and engaged citizens. Be the people who always connect seemingly disparate people, helping them find commonalities and value their differences. Be the people who connect ideas to find new ways of thinking, thereby making a difference in the personal, professional, and civic spheres of your life. Second, embrace and sustain the relationships you found here. Many of you will remain lifelong friends. You are graduating into an alumni community of 40,000 Denisonians. You will be surprised at how much Denisonians you know now, but also Denisonians you have also yet to meet will improve the quality of your life. Finally, stay connected to this college, come back for your reunions, put a Denison coffee mug on your desk at work, a bumper sticker on your car, and a Denison pennant on your refrigerator at home. You are great people, and we want the world to know that you are Denisonians. Identify yourself so members of our extended family can find you and connect with you. You have earned your college degrees in a challenging and chaotic moment in history. It's a moment that will pass and it will leave the world reshaped. Nobody is better prepared to lean into and to find the path through this challenging moment than you. Take what you have learned at Denison and apply it as leaders 
in large and small ways in your communities and in your future workplaces to give hope and to renew spirits. You are a remarkable generation of Denisonians, and it is with great pride that we send you into the world. Congratulations. One of our traditions um, is, to, is always to have a student speaker. So it's our tradition at Denison that each year, a member of the graduating class addresses their classmates. The speaker is chosen through a competitive process by a community of faculty, staff, and fellow students. This year's speaker, Michaela Morrison, is a double major in global commerce and Spanish and is a committed leader on the varsity swim and dive team. That would be the swim and dive team that was ranked number one in the country this year. Michaela has excelled as an AUGO leader, a DU lead organizer, providing new students with encouragement as they needed to transition into Denison. Michaela is going to deliver her full remarks at our in-person ceremony back on campus, but we asked her today to just share a few words to mark this important milestone for the great Denison class of 2020. This year's student commencement speaker, Michaela Morrison. Class of 2020, congratulations. We just pulled off the greatest senior skip day in the history of senior skip days. I would say it's nice to see you all dressed up, but I can't see any of you. However, I'm sure many of us have been wearing robes for quite a few months now, and now we just have our upgraded robes. We owe a huge amount of gratitude to President Weinberg, the Board of Trustees, the senior staff, the commencement committee, and the Red Frame Lab for working with students to make our graduation possible. Thank you to our professors who worked tirelessly with online classes to ensure we could have a strong finish to our academic school year. Telling my parents I couldn't do the dishes because I had to go to the class was just as fun the 30th time as it was the first. I'd also like to take a moment to thank Dr. Laurel Kennedy, the Vice President of Student Life, for your 30 years of commitment to Denison and your dedicated and thoughtful response to students and parents during the COVID-19 pandemic. We wish you the best in the future. Challenge is a call to action and obstacles create opportunity. It is sometimes the belief that you need to be brave or courageous before you can do great things. But in many cases, it is in those moments of uncertainty and fear that we learn to be brave. And while we may not be responsible for our circumstances, it is our responsibility to make the most of our situation. We all have our own reasons for choosing to come to Denison, and I'm sure none of us chose to come here to be average. We chose a school that strives to be the best example of a progressive institution. We have been challenged in various aspects of our student life on the Hill, and from our academics to our co-curricular activities, we have met each obstacle as it presents itself with immediate action, empathy, and unity. We know that doing the right thing is not always the easy thing. In light of recent events, there are just some things we cannot ignore. We recognize and mourn for those who have been most affected by the pandemic. Denison offers a vast qu quantity of classes that cover incredible amounts of information, but there is no class and no capstone course that could have prepared us for this experience. We have learned on a greater level about loss, fear, uncertainty, chaos, the list could go on, but we have also learned to a far greater degree about empathy, decisive action, and solidarity. Our class of 2020 has been called to action to use the leadership skills we have gained over our four years. We didn't have to graduate in order to enter the real world. While Denison is an idyllic, picturesque, small-town college campus in the heart of the Midwest, it would be a disservice to ourselves to neglect that the obstacles we faced here at Denison are not real world. Within just the first few months as first years, the outcome of the 2016 presidential election polarized our campus. And through diverse viewpoints, we navigated tough conversations with a sense of solidarity, and we built skills to listen and respond civilly. We have experienced intense divisions and heartfelt loss. And yet in these troubled times, we have unified and supported one another because we know this is what will allow us to heal and progress. We have created a legacy at Denison and forged a model for future classes of Denisonians to learn from and make better. Denisonians are entrepreneurs by nature. We are profound thinkers, we are people who are committed to action, and we love to be involved. Think about this. Committing to holding our graduation, despite everything, is one of the most Denison things ever. 
Well, maybe besides Connie dressing up as Henrietta the turkey for Thanksgiving dinner, but how many colleges allow their students to design their own graduation? I mean, do you realize how much power we have? We could have asked them to gather all of the deer on campus and dress them up in caps and gowns to be stand-in graduates for us during our virtual conferral of degrees. We are entering a world where issues that have existed for years are becoming stronger and more pressing. Because of our holistic approach to learning, we have gained a holistic approach to problem solving, and our world needs problem solvers like us. Right now, it may be hard to not think that what has occurred has forever negatively impacted what we have worked for and earned. Instead, what it has done is it has given us a unique legacy in Denison's history. When people look at what the Denison class of 2020 is doing in the future, we want them to see us as the catalysts for positive impact. Despite shortcomings, we want them to see us as people who are persistent in accomplishing our goals. In the face of what occurred during arguably the most special time of our college experience, we want to be seen as people who can remain unified during times of crisis, and people who will always find a way to maintain a positive outlook. Some of the things we've lost may be redeemed in ways we do not yet know. By no means should we have everything figured out today here at this virtual conferral. Although, for the parents, I'm sure it would be nice to know what your child is doing in September. Am I right, Mom? If you are ever nervous or anxious about your future, remember what you have been a part of here at Denison. You are a product of what has been created here. You are a part of this legacy, and you will always find your way if you remind yourself of what it means to be a Denisonian. Class of 2020, just like President Weinberg said about our graduation, we are big, we are bold, and we are beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Michaela, for those thoughtful reflections. Um, it's important to recognize the extraordinary circumstances under which the Denison Class of 2020 is graduating. In extraordinary circumstances, there are absolutely challenges, but there are also opportunities. And one of the traditions, one of the values of the liberal arts is we always find those opportunities in challenging times. We find ways to rediscover the values of our traditions and to find unique moments that will create memories for a lifetime. And so for this virtual conferring of degrees, I'm honored to introduce a special guest who eagerly accepted an opportunity to address the Denison class of 2020. May I present great Denison alum from the class of 1984, Steve Carell. President Weinberg, trustees, faculty, parents, guests, and graduating seniors. I'd like to thank you all for not being here. We all don't come together today to celebrate the Denison University Class of 2020. In the almost 190 years of this illustrious institution, this is the first virtual graduation. And if it goes well, it may be turned into an annual tradition to gather our community together in their pajamas and sweatpants and acknowledge the accomplishments of spectacular young men and women via spotty internet service. As I look out at where you should all be sitting, I'm reminded of the words of Tennyson, who said, I can't believe they canceled graduation. Quarantine sucks. It does suck. It's not fair. You should be in Granville right now. I should be in Granville right now. This should be a real Denison crest. I shouldn't have had to have ordered my gown on Amazon, but that is life as we know it. But know this, know that you are celebrated. Your parents are extremely proud of you. Well, most of you, they're extremely proud of 70% of you. Know that the education you received here will be a strong foundation for whatever the future may bring. Know that, ah, it's the police helicopter. You can really tell that we're in Granville, Ohio.
I hope you get them. Know that what you think may happen in your life may not happen, and that's okay. 36 years ago, I sat at my dentist in graduation thinking that I was going to go to law school and that I would have a highly successful career as an attorney. Unfortunately, my life didn't turn out that way. I had to settle for my backup career as an incredibly famous TV and film actor. So prepare yourself for disappointment. I guess that my advice to you is to use this moment. Embrace it, as opposed to resenting it. Every day, the world changes exponentially. We are seeing the best in people, and we are seeing the worst. And amidst the chaos and confusion, some wonderful things are shining through. Compassion, commitment to purpose, generosity, bravery, and human kindness. So, in the face of what seems at times like a dystopian nightmare, try to remember to be kind. Remember to take care of one another. Laugh when you have the opportunity and cry when you have to. And don't let your parents get on your nerves for the next few months. I know you'll all be living very closely, but just understand that they are very happy to have you home. Thank you and congratulations, class of 2020. Thank you, Steve. Um, thank you for living the mission of this college. Thank you for being a great Denisonian. Um, and thank you for being able and willing to step up and lean in and help us celebrate the great Denison class of 2020. I now call upon the provost of the college, Dr. Kim Copeland, to preside over the presentation of candidates and the awarding of baccalaureate degrees as authorized by the faculty of Denison University. Class of 2020, I invite you from wherever you are participating in today's conferral of degrees ceremony to stand as you are able. Mr. President, I have the honor of presenting for their degrees the members of the Denison University class of 2020. By the virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Denison University and on the recommendation of the faculty, I confer upon each of you your degree with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Congratulations. Members of the great Denison class of 2020 who are wearing your caps today, please join together as a class in turning your tassels from right to left. In keeping with tradition, we will end this important ceremony by honoring our long history and celebrating the bright future of this class of Denisonians through the playing of To Denison, our alma mater. To the great Denison class of 2020, congratulations. I look forward to welcoming you back to campus when we will have a proper graduation ceremony in senior week. Congratulations. To